Well, what is going on? Welcome back to Clayton Schick Outdoors. Of course, I'm Clayton Schick. This is the wonderful outdoors and today's mission, lake trout and to talk about different baits that you might use for this year of lake trout fishing. In the last video, I covered rods, reels, line, and then this video, we're gonna cover different baits that you could be using. And uh, hopefully in the process of talking about baits, we can put a big mama lake trout on the ice because we didn't succeed in the last video but we did catch about probably about 10 fish so we did have a good day for action we just never had that big fish cruise around so otters already set up in the same spot i was in the last video uh, i like to give a spot sometimes two or three days to kind of see what the potential of that area is and yeah so let's get to it okay we are ooh, crispy we are set up dropping down question is how long does it take In my experience lake trout fishing you usually catch one or have some action right away because there's fish in the area so let's see starting with a big old tube jig I don't know for sure if I'll use all the baits in this video that I'm gonna talk about today but we're gonna go through yeah there's a fish right there we're gonna go through different baits for lake trout Fish actually looks decent, maybe. Hard to tell. Hard to tell. Just get going. No, it's a small guy. Anyway, I don't know if I'm going to use all the baits I'm going to talk about, but we're going to go through a pile of different baits and options that I think are a great bait to add to your arsenal type of thing. I don't have everything with me, so if I talk about something, I'll try to flash it up on the screen as well or do an overlay shot with it, something like that. But. I brought, I brought a good supply of stuff with me today anyway, just to show some, show some things off for sure. Oh, 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 I zoomed in a little bit too far. That's a nice fish, I think. That's a nice fish. Yeah, that's a, that's a good one. Come on. I zoomed in a little bit too, further than I want to. I was just zoomed out and I was looking at a fish about 80 feet away. There, that's a little bit better. That's a nice fish. Oh, oh, oh. This fish is charging in. Nice. Okay. Well, it didn't take too long about five minutes I did have two fish come in and deny me what a squeak in my squeak in here uh, I did have two fish come in and deny me so I downsized tubes just a little bit and the first fish that came by ate that's a little guy a little guy first one of the day just a, a little guy a luncher an eater be a good eater dropping down fish following down here He's a little guy though. Bump the bottom here a bit. Reel up slow. Get his attention. Oh. Looks like he took a run at it. He's coming again. Nice. Okay. Oh, gone. He's just a little guy. Just a little guy. It's okay. Oh, I got a text message. I'm popular. Popular today. It's probably Cindy. Probably Cindy making sure that I'm actually out fishing and not sleeping somewhere in my truck. Oh, he picked it up. He picked it up as it was falling. Okay. Well, a couple swings and a miss, but we got him. We got him. Oh, he is dogging hard. Come on. Okay, there we go. I need to get to a spot where I could reel down and pull up again here. He's, he's not big. That I know for sure. But he definitely dogged down there for just a couple seconds. Oh, watch this. I'll get him stuck on the bottom of the ice here. Just stuck there for a second. Okay. Okay. Easy. Easy. Come here. Just give me your tail. Just give me your tail, buddy. Okay. Well, not always going to be big. Even if you're using a big bait, look at that thing. They're, uh, they can be aggressive even when they're smaller. 
especially the darker lake trout. Fish two of the day. Looks a little beat up in his fins there and stuff. Oh, he's burping now. Fish two. Going back. Oh, there's one coming here. I'm just zoomed out right now heavily. Just because I was looking because there's a fish about 60, 70 feet away. I'm going to drop it down here. And zoom. Uh oh, uh oh. Oh, there's two fish coming there now. Little guys again. Little guys. Both of them are little guys. Oh, he picked it up. He picked it up. <laughs> I got him. I got him. It's kind of cool to be able to zoom so far out like even though i can't do anything about it there's fish 80 feet over there now if it was really nice out i guess you could go drill some holes and you could drop down right so oh there's a fish coming another one coming there let's we'll get this one out quick and drop back down a fish looks to be smaller too but fish three of the day tube jig right now and yeah well like i said we will we will eventually start talking about some baits and stuff here I'm not 100% sure, but that fin right there, I'm, I feel like I caught this fish already. You know, this one may seem a little bit bigger, but we'll, we'll, look, we'll look in more detail later because I'm holding it the same way as I would the other one there. And there's a bottom fin there too. And yeah. Have I caught you already today, buddy? <laughs> it's very possible I've already caught that fish today. So anybody that's been following me for a long time knows that one of my staple baits for lake trout is a tube jig. And yes, these are all chartreuse. You can mess around with different colors of baits, obviously, or tubes, I should say. But these are different sizes. Here we have a small 4-inch with the 5 8 That's for when the fish are a little bit more finicky or when you're maybe not dealing with bigger fish. Uh, this is called the bite size. These are all, all, I'll get to where all they're all from. This one right here is a six inch. This is a little bit smaller than obviously this one right here. This isn't, this is just a prototype right now of what's coming. So they could be changed to a five and a half inch possibly, but this one is gonna be called the middleman. And then this one here, the big mama, this is like, it's only like a half an inch bigger, an inch bigger than the other one, but it's just a little bit wider profile. It's big, it's thick. This is a two ounce. The last one was a two ounce. You can run a three ounce in here as well. And I do that in the summertime, but this one's called the big mama. So the big mama, the middleman, and the bite size. Lots of different color options. You can get these at senditoutdoors.com. You can use code Clayton15. He's got a bunch of other different style of tubes on there too. Uh, a really cool one is the bleeding chartreuse or the bleeding, I forget what the other one is, but there's a couple bleeding tubes that are really cool too. And uh, yeah, there's just, he, he does, Matt King does a great job with his tubes. These ones seem to be really, really good material. They hold up really well. I've got one of my other rod that I used all day in the last video and uh, it's it's still good. It's still going. Whereas the old jelly tubes here that I got in, from Manitoba somewhere, Kramer it's called, they get beat up pretty quick. So in my opinion, a tube jig is probably the biggest staple lake trout bait out there. And it should, if you're only going to have one thing in your box, it for sure should be a tube jig and anywhere from five eighths ounce to um, running three ounce I'll, any sizes in between there four inch five inch six inch bite size middleman and the big mama those three are awesome oh boy i'm messing with settings and a fish just ate it <laughs> well it's okay just messing with settings there because there's so many more settings and options to dial in with live scope compared to what i was used to in the mega live here you can really dial everything in so good so i was just messing around with it a little bit and uh yeah fish swooped in and ate it those double tens look so impressive i just need a big fish to bring them up there not not these little guys oh this is a lighter colored one most of the fish I've caught in the last few days have all been darker. This is the first, I think, light, oh, light colored one. Oh boy, he destroyed my tube too. 
that was insane. Okay, like I said, a little bit lighter colored one, whereas every one, every other trout's been so dark so far. Whoa, easy, buddy. <laughs> like I talked about lots, the downfall of double tens is the little guys make a, a mess in the shack. Oh, jeez, I was just doing the old column climb off the bottom. This fish shot out of nowhere. Oh, it's gone. Have the big tube on right now, so it's still hard to hook up on smaller fish. That's literally just going down, dropping, closing the bale, reeling up over and over again. Just trying to work the water column here and draw some fish in potentially that maybe see my jig falling from a further distance. And yeah, that fish came out of nowhere and smacked me. Dun, dun, oh, 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 what's here? Ah, little guy. Little guy. He just bumped it twice. Three times. Okay, nope. When they're small like that, it's hard to hard to hook into him. Oh, he's got it again. Okay, I think we got him this time. If they don't grab that whole tube, it's definitely hard to pin him. And he's gone again. He's gone again. Third time's a charm. You give me one more shot, buddy. Here he comes, third time. Third time. Come on. I got good hook sets on him, that's for sure. That time, see, I got a weak hook set. That's probably gonna, probably gonna be all I need to land him now. Oh, well, I think this is my fifth fish of the day. And does he count? I don't know. There's two more fish down there. So that's maybe a blessing in disguise right now that that fish came off. I got a fish on the left and a fish on the right. <laughs> Jeez. This fish I messed with for a while dropped down. We'll see if he stays connected. I think I've lost this fish about three times already. He's just a little guy. and Well, little guys in a big tube just don't go hand in hand, really. It's hard to, it's hard to connect with them. I'll kind of show why that is too okay where are you buddy i can hear him bang on the bottom of the ice okay there he is oh don't make a mess don't make a mess don't make a mess if you come off it's okay don't make a mess please okay well i think that's fish five of the day another dark one again so dark beautiful 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 so i'll kind of i'll get my hands dried off here and i'll show on this camera i gotta wipe off too now he made a mess of it i'll show kind of why that it's harder to catch those smaller fish on a tube jig and then i'll show you some lures that are good for the smaller fish so if you ever caught lake trout before you'll notice that they are a very very powerful fish in terms of their ability to clamp down on a bait so a smaller fish like that will grab the tube jig sometimes here sometimes here wherever it is but they clamp down on that bait so hard when you set the hook you're not getting that bait to slip through their mouth you're actually pulling the fish up because it's so light a bigger fish that hook's gonna slip because the fish is heavy you can slip that hook through their mouth then and connect with them so a lot of times those smaller ones like i said clamp down on that bait so hard set it and all you do is like you're pulling the fish up that's why you'll see me a lot of times giving it like one two three hook sets because if I catch them, I catch them. And if I don't, whatever. But you're trying to like bury that hook home. And it's not because it's like, oh, it's in there and you want to give it again. It's because they clamp down so hard on that bait and you kind of pull the fish with it. That's, that's my theory and opinion. Obviously, it doesn't mean it's the right one, but it, it makes sense for sure. Okay, let's drop this bait down there. So we have a lure in the water and show off some, we'll talk about spoons. Spoons are such a lake trout staple, especially for the smaller ones, I feel like. And now I have some spoons, some bigger options that eventually I'll try for some bigger fish at some point too. Spoon, spoon, spoons. The one spoon I already have tied on here, which is brand new now. This is a Magnum size dinner bell. And this is obviously insanity pepper, chartreuse. If it ain't chartreuse, it ain't no use. So that's a little bit on the bigger size, but uh, some smaller ones here. This is 
Also a new size of dinner bell. I think it's just called the extra large though. So a little bit smaller than the Magnum, but a good size for smaller lake trout. So Frostbite has the dinner bells. They're very, very good for lake trout. I think the big fish is gonna be good for, or uh, that big bait's gonna be good with the bigger fish. And then these ones plus, they have a tungsten one as well. That's one size smaller. That will be really good. I haven't used this yet, but here's, look at this one. This is fun. Where is it? Right here. I put a small dinner bell inside the Magnum dinner bell. I haven't used it yet, but we'll call that the double, the double dinner bell. So that's a very, very good option. Something I've done really well with in the past is a cast master spoon this being an ounce and a half uh same thing ounce and a half but i added a little tail on the back end of it these are available from acme and then of course a staple in the lake trout world for a long time is the little cleos again from acme this one is a three quarter ounce so three quarter ounce uh little cleos and then like an ounce to two ounce uh cast masters here that one's stuck together. I want to drop in the hole, but cast masters are such a good lake trout spoon. The cast masters will drop more straight up and down vertical wise. And then the little quills will flutter way out to the side. Same with the dinner bells. They have a pretty good motion all the way out to the sides. You can let them fall and you can walk them all the way back. But spoons are a lake trout staple for sure. I never leave home without them. If the bite's slower or I'm fishing maybe a lake that is known for more action and not bigger fish, I'll likely run spoons. It's a fish coming in here. Um, oh yeah. Oh yeah. This one's definitely bigger than the other one. Come on, it's gaining some speed. Come on, buddy. Come on. Come on. No, 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 no. Try to drop it past it, maybe. Come on. See it fall. See it fall, buddy. See it fall. Come on. There, it like that. It like that down on the bottom dirt. Come on. Come on. Down, get it down on the dirt, buddy. Yeah, there we go. Get down there. Eat that tube out of the bottom. Just going by feel. Come on. Come on, went past it. So we'll go up here. Come on, it's a bigger fish. Come on. Oh, come on, buddy. Come on. Let's do it. Get back down on the dirt. Yeah. Pound it up hard, maybe. Come on. Go get back here, buddy. Come on. Come on. Come here. Rip it hard. I gotta try to get this fish back somehow. Oh no, come on. Come on, buddy, get over here. Oh. Well, I had a big mark come in. I had my had my number one confidence bait on too, the middleman tube. Oh, are you kidding me? Coming in, little guy. Yeah, I think it's the little guy. <laughs> well, the little guys are aggressive. The bigger one sure wasn't, but this guy is, he was, oh, and I lost him. Little guy's so hard to get. So hard to stay buttoned, but he's, he's gonna give me another chance here, it looks like. Yeah, I never did get a great hook set on him either. Well, the smaller guys are aggressive. If that bigger one would have been as aggressive as this fish, we, uh, we might have scored a good one today. It's hard, those little guys are hard. They really are. So when somebody says like, how come I'm losing so many lake trout? Just part of it. Like you could add a trailer hook to the tube jigs and probably catch those smaller ones more often. But the bigger ones, you don't need that trailer hook and you run a risk of getting that hook caught at the bottom of the ice with those fish then too, the bigger ones. The smaller ones get off, hey, they get off. Half the fun is just them chasing around here anyway. Oh, he's hardly touched it. Come on, again, he hardly touched it. Come here. <laughs> I shouldn't even have said it. He again, he just like hardly, hardly touched it. <laughs> Never had it in his his mouth at all. Oh boy! Oh boy! 
That's a big fish, I think. Not on me right now, coming behind here. Yeah, that's a good one. Yes, that's a good one right there. That's a good one. Oh, baby. It was on my phone, like always, as a little fish was messing around with me. And this big guy just watched cruise right in there. Oh, yes. A fish we've been waiting for a full day and a half in the same spot. I did have a bigger one come by earlier and not and not eat. Okay, here we go. Just trying to get that drag perfect so it can it can run a bit. Okay, okay, it feels heavy. It feels heavy. Is that it down there? It is only, is that right there? It, yeah, it's not that far down right now. I do want it to run a little bit. There we go, these 3000s have a good, good drag. When they're pulling like that and they can't gain much on the drag, it's tight, that's what'll wear them out quicker, like that. So you wanna keep it strong enough that it wears them out. This is 20 pound fluorocarbon leader, 30 pound braid, drag's pretty tight. I might loosen off just a bit more yet here. So in his next run, he can burn a little bit more. There we go, oh yeah. Oh yeah, there we go. Man, that thing, that fish just committed. Like, he committed heavy. There he is, right back to the bottom. Okay, buddy, now my turn. Not quite my turn. Not quite my turn. Oh, he feels heavy. Okay, as soon as he stops, you give it to him. Come on. Oh. My nerves, oh, I hate when they do that, when he, when he rolls like that. It's always the scariest. Okay, buddy. Come on, Clayton, let's get this fish. I feel like you got a good hook set, but that doesn't mean much. Lakers can definitely shake hooks better than any other fish, especially down through the ice. I'm gaining on him good now. When it's your turn, you give it to him. When they want to run, you let him run. I don't think that's him right there. There's another fish just below me. I think I got this one still down pretty far. Okay, bring my drag up a little bit. Oh, okay, there he goes. Nice, another important thing too is after you do catch a couple big fish on some line, give it a really, really good look over. There he is in the live imaging about 15 feet down, 20 feet down. My leader knot is right at the bottom of the hole. So I'm gonna see my, I'm gonna see my FG knot come through here right away. Man, he feels heavy. I'm guessing he's gonna be at least 38 plus. Oh, 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 oh. wow. Man, Lake Trout never get old. Oh, he is putting a lot of strain on that rod. Okay, stopped him there. That's a good thing. We stopped him right there at 50 feet. Now we're gonna lay it to him. Oh, my arm is sore. Oh, wow. I'm probably showing most of this fight on the head camera because I'm standing up out of frame, probably out of all the frames right now. Oh, come on. I'm still on the tube jig, even though we are talking about other baits. Tube jig is my biggest confidence bait for big lake trout. This is a long fight. This is a long fight already. Okay, he's there at 30 feet. 30 feet we got him to. That looks so cool. I think I just heard my my floral on the on the end of the uh, ice there. Oh, it's popping. Popping's an okay sound. Popping just means that it's coming out of some grooves. Okay, got him down. He's at 25 feet, just bulldogging. Man, this fish feels big. This fish feels big. I'm nervous. I've caught a pile of big lake trout, but you know what? My heart still pumps and I still get so nervous with every one. Like right now, if the hook comes out, I I would actually be pretty upset and pretty pretty sad, I'm not gonna lie. But we're just gonna we're just gonna hope that it comes. Holy, this is his third run now. Wow. That rod is just doubled, and this is an extra heavy fiberglass rod. Okay, 60 feet, he went back down to 55 feet. 
hopefully this is your last run i haven't even had him at the bottom of the ice yet like at the hole usually you when you get them to the bottom of the ice though they're they're done they're tuckered right out okay 45 feet 40 feet i'm just shaking i'm so nervous 45 come on buddy i'm so nervous oh this is this is one of the longer fights i've had in a long time with a leg trot i feel like through the ice usually i can usually i can kick their butt in like two three minutes this has probably been five already oh man he made a sudden jump up he must have rolled there and i thought he i thought the hook popped i was a sad panda there for one second maybe less than a second okay 25 feet i want to try to get him over here more just so he doesn't hit that live imaging pole although i feel like it's just below the ice okay where is he right now i just felt my leader knot come through the ice there's my leader knot that's good try to get a little bit of an angle on here for the lift oh i saw him for a second no buddy are you kidding me oh, so nervous i was trying to get a better angle here so we could see it through the double 10 he's getting tired because his runs are getting a lot shorter and back to my knot oh it's big yeah it's a big one i don't know how big but it's definitely pretty big <sighs> could only be 38 inches even right they fight hard 38s fight hard too okay he's right here oh i don't know how big oh it just hit the pole that's okay though that's okay don't mind if it hits it if i see it move at all i'll pull it up okay there he is again you know i don't think he's great great big but he's nice oh don't get that hook caught don't get that hook caught come on buddy yeah oh there we go we got him we got him okay, come on buddy come up come up are you stuck somewhere where is it stuck come on where is it stuck okay no it's coming she just that fat Holy cow, I'm so glad I got double tens. It is that fat. Oh, that is a giant. That is a giant leg throat. Oh, yes. Wow, am I glad I have a double 10 on that thing. It was so hard to get up that hole. Let's get that hook out. Oh, pop pretty easy. Okay, we're gonna get the measuring board ready. Bring it up, measure it. I'm just like, I'm exhausted from this fight. That was a big one. Okay okay show it oh my goodness it's so heavy holy cow that is a giant giant lake trout i, I can't even get the whole thing in the frame i gotta step back my hand is shaking oh that is a tank wow no wonder it fought so heavy man it's not like crazy long it's only 43 inches but it is a blimp wow okay show it off quick oh my goodness it's oh it's still got so much strength oh, 43 but huge huge oh my goodness oh my goodness oh oh look at this that thing has so much strength still and there it goes look at watch it go down on the live imaging I'm trying to track it right there Oh, I'm breathing so heavy. Oh. Which way? There? I'm trying to find it. Right, right there. There it is. It's a 40 feet. And going and going down. Right there. Where'd it go? Oh, oh. Right there. There it goes. Swimming down to the bottom it's probably as tired as i am giant fish giant fish well the fish was an inch and a half off of length pb through the ice but that fish reminds me of a fish i caught a couple years ago i think 2021 i think maybe 2020 actually no 2020 it was already was it was a 43 and a half and it was just it was a blimp it was a, a giant fish and that, that's that this fish reminded me a lot of that fish 
insane. My, my arms are actually sore. A day and a half is what it took. Actually, almost a two full days. It's four o'clock already. So almost two full days at a spot. I got denied once earlier by a bigger fish. And this one was just like, it was so committed. You can tell it came in from, from that way somewhere. Most of the fish been coming this way, which is deeper. That way it gets a little bit of a drop off, but not as much. It only gets down to probably 80 feet type of thing. I'm on kind of a, a little bit of a crest here, top of a, a hump basically. But uh, most of the fish have been coming from the deeper water. It gets out to like 100 and 120 that way. And most of the fish, like I said, have been coming that way. And this one actually came in from here. That was an insane fight. Like he took three or four heavy runs and uh, I gave it to him. Like I never like, I never went soft on him at all. I fought him hard the whole way. And I think that's really important to stress with Lake Trout. You don't want to fight him for an hour. When they're not, when they're swimming and not doing much, you need to give it to them and bring them up. They don't get tired by just swimming around. They get tired from those hard dives against your drag. That's one thing I'll like really stress with that is like trust your equipment. If you don't trust it, get better stuff or get somebody else to tie your knots or something like that. Trust your gear. Like that's like a, a 35 pound fish type of thing. And I'm only running 30 pound braid and 20 pound fluorocarbon leader. That rod absorbs so much. So even though it's a 20 pound leader, the, how much it absorbs, it's it's acting more like a 50, 60 pound liter because your rod is absorbing everything like that. So don't max your rod out when it's running. You don't want to max your rod out because then that's when you can break your line, right? If your rod is completely maxed, like I mean like to the point where it's going to break and it's not pulling, you need to loosen your drag a little bit because that's where you risk breaking your line. But when he's pulling on the rod, something's not going to break in your line unless there's a flaw in it or a nick or something like that right so i can't stress that enough give it to those fish like when it's your turn wear them out as quick as you can because you'll just you'll tire them out to the point of exhaustion basically oh there's a fish coming towards my spoon i'm just getting the battery down Fish, uh oh, what's going on? What's going on? Fish come towards my spoon. And I just gotta, I think the camera's good now. Come on, new spoon. Be the first fish. Uh oh, he's little. First fish on the new dinner bell is gonna be a small one. But it's a fish. This one feels really small. Like maybe it was born yesterday. Feels tiny. Oh yeah, that's a. Oh, is it a walleye? Okay, 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 okay. Well, this guy's trying to flop out of my hand. He did get the camera wet from all the way over there. Whoa. Uh, no, back down. Uh, touchdown. <laughs> Little guys are so hard to control. I'm just so thankful that he landed right in the hole. That was awesome. Oh, oh, comes one, comes one. Oh, no, denied. Line it up again, just a little guy again. Go show you how, like, how small that last fish was. That, was that uh, tube jig, it's harder for those, those little fish to grab it. The spoon's a little bit easier because they come up from underneath it and they just grab the treble hook. It's just a little bit smaller profile. Obviously the spoon's bigger, but it's sitting up and down and they have a smaller, like I said, a smaller profile compared to where it's like horizontal and it's side to side. Could that little fish get that tube jig in its mouth? Of course it could. We'll keep our rod here because that little guy was kind of messing with it. And we will pull out some other baits here. Other baits. What do we got here? What do we got in the tickle trunk? Okay. A big rattle bait. By the time this video is released, there should be a new rattle bait from frostbite as well that's even bigger than this i believe but this is a size 100 they call it uh, i think it's like four and a half inches or four inches it's 100 millimeters whatever 100 millimeters comes to in uh inches and that's a good color this gold one's a good one done really really well on fire tiger 
And then of course, a classic staple here is the old metallic sexy shad. This one's Glow Tiger, I think is what that's called. I don't know the name of the gold one. Another really, really good option, the Hyper Hammer TT from Acme Tackle. This is a one ounce bait, sinks pretty quick, a little bit smaller profile. It's kind of like a spoon in the sense where you're going to catch more fish. And maybe we'll use this in the next couple of days. I haven't really decided yet because I am kind of hunting bigger fish for the most part. But the Hyper Hammer one ounce, that is a lake trout killer. Got another option here. You can do a swim bait. This is a half ounce Kalen's Google Eye jig. And you can put on like any four or five inch swim bait on there. For example, the Dragon Slayer from Frostbite or from Acme Tackle. Kalen's actually, it's actually Kalen's. Um, the tickle tail, five inch tickle tail, the tickle shad, stuff like that is a really, really good bait to add to something like that. Going to catch probably less fish with it. Sorry, more fish with it because it's a little bit smaller. But yeah, those are kind of my, my staples. Tubes, spoons, rattle baits, little swim baits, and the hyper hammer right there. You, you take a couple of like that stuff with you, lake trout fishing, you'll be fine. Um, you know, some friends that use like a rip and wrap from uh, uh, Rapala, like a number size seven. Another good option would be the V rod, the heaviest size. Uh, I don't know the exact size. I think it's a, I think it's a half ounce though, a half ounce V rod from Acme. That's another really, really good bait. And yeah, honestly, it's just trial and error. Every lake's different. But if I could only take, if I could honestly only take one bait with me, lake trail fishing, it would be a tube jig, hundred percent but it's nice to have a little bit of everything because you never know. Oh, 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 fish flew in. Smaller one again. <laughs> well, the new dinner bell spoon. Seems like trout like it. I'm two marks, two fish. I don't think this one is uh, much bigger than the last one though. <laughs> I'll try to not uh send this one flying into the 10 inch hole after this one's pretty small too that's kind of neat though a big spoon catches will catch fish of all size then that's a good thing and hooks up pretty easily too easier than the tube jig oh don't come up backwards you're gonna make a mess a lot of these small ones seem to come up backwards Oh, I can just grab the spoon, it's so big. Well, they're getting a little bit bigger on the spoon. Yeah, this one's like, I think maybe just about an inch smaller than that 43, it's like 42 inches. I'm just kidding. Whoa, I didn't want to lose my rod, so he didn't get the best release either, but they're safe in this little hole. And remember, all these lake trout videos that I'm doing for the first part of the season, they all have like, little different talks in and my first video that I put out from this year was I talked about, or I talked about rods and reels and line. And this one I'm talking about baits. Uh, I think in the next video, we're gonna talk about location for lake trout. I think that's what we'll do. So that's kind of the idea of this whole series is that you have to watch all of them to be able to get all of the tips, tricks, techniques, all that fun stuff. Can't give all the juice just in one video because then nobody will watch, watch the other ones, right? Let's, we gotta, we got to lay it out nice and slow. Well, it's getting pretty nasty, windy out here. I got about probably an hour left before the sun sets, but we're going to pack it up for the day. We had a great day. We caught a giant lake trout. That, that was a, a big one. That was a, a real thick 43-inch lake trout. It was big. And like I said, there's more lake trout videos coming. You have to kick off this ice fishing season. I've officially put a big one on the ice. So even though it's technically, it's, it is still 2023 when you're watching this and when it was filmed. So it still is this year, but it is obviously, I'm showing this in the next season just to kickstart everybody. I hope you guys are excited for the ice fishing season because I'm on a mission this year to film more content than I ever have for the winter. So anyways, thank you so much for watching. And don't forget, get outside.